Hey everybody. Today I want to talk about my water a little bit. If you watch my videos regularly, you'll often hear me remark about how I've got odd water and I've got weird water and I'm not going to get into it now, but my water is really strange and so on and so forth. Well, this is the video where I'm actually going to get into it and talk about why it's strange and why fish seem to have a difficult time adapting to it. And the reason we're going to start by looking at this tank is I have some ballast sharks in here. And ballast sharks were one of the fish that I long ago gave up trying to keep because every time I tried to keep them, they always seemed to die within six weeks of putting them in the tank or something. So at the time, when I was much, much less experienced, I chalked it up to the ballast sharks being a kind of fish that was real finicky or real sensitive to water conditions or something like that. And I just kind of wrote them off. So recently, I bought some more ballast sharks and I put them in this tank. And I now know that ballast sharks are actually quite hardy. They're very adaptable. They can live in a wide range of water hardnesses and wide range of pH. So I thought, well, maybe, you know, it was just my inexperience and poor husbandry that was killing them before. I shouldn't have any reasons why I can't keep these ballast sharks in my water. And so I got six of them, and they made it through quarantine just fine. They went in the tank, and within a couple of weeks of being in the tank, I started losing them. So I eventually lost three. I got three more to replace them, and I put them in quarantine. And by the time those three, which are the three we're looking at, came out of quarantine, the remaining three that had been in the tank had died too. So I lost all six of the original ballast sharks that were in here and these three are three more that I got uh, to replace some of the dead ones and I'm no longer, I'm not going to get three more, I'm not going to stock it back up to six. If these three survive, great. If they don't, I'm not going to try to put ballast sharks in my water anymore. Now I'm still not sure why the ballast sharks don't do well in my water. As I just said, they really are adaptable, hardy fish, and I shouldn't have any uh, problem with them. Um, so let's get to my water. Why is my water weird? My water is weird because I run it through a water softening system. And if you're not familiar with the water softening system, it is a system that runs the water through a resin that is a ion exchange resin. So what happens is the water hardness gets removed and the ions that are taken out of my water get replaced with sodium ions. Now water hardness is defined as calcium and magnesium. There are a few other trace elements that contribute to water hardness like iron for example, but most people don't have very much iron in their water. So your water hardness is a measurement of how much calcium and how much magnesium you have in your water. So my water gets all of that stuff removed. But as the calcium and magnesium ions are removed from the water, they're replaced. I have an ion exchange resin. So the exchange is calcium and magnesium gets exchanged for sodium. That's why you put the uh, salt in the reservoir on those water softeners. I need those sodium ions. I don't need the chloride, but I need the sodium ions from the salt in order to recharge my resin and keep my water softener working. So what that results in, long story short, is I do have a neutralizer, so I'm able to stabilize my pH right around neutral, but I also have very, very soft water. In fact, it's so soft, I have zero degrees hardness. But remember what I said about what counts as water hardness. It's calcium and magnesium that count as water hardness. So I don't have any calcium and magnesium in my water at all. I have none, but I do have a lot of sodium in my water. So my total dissolved solids is fairly high. It, it runs up to 400 parts per million sometimes, and a lot of that, uh, over 300 of those parts per million, are sodium ions. So it makes it strange water. If you do a water hardness test, you actually get very soft water. And as I said, you get zero degrees hardness. If you do a total dissolved solids test, you get 400 parts per million. So 
what that means is I can't keep fish that live at either end of the spectrum, but I can keep a lot of fish that live in the middle of the spectrum. In other words, very soft water fish like cardinals, um, discus, any sort of like wild caught angelfish, wild caught Corydoras, any really soft water fish can't live in my water even though I have zero degrees hardness. I have water that's as soft as can be, but those really soft water fish can't live in my water because I have sodium ions in the water and that still disrupts their osmoregulation when they need to be in really soft water. I just have way too much sodium in there for them to do that. On the other hand, really hard water fish like African cichlids, they can't tolerate my water because even though it's got 400 parts per million sodium ions, sodium is all it has in there. And when you've got fish that are really hard water fish, they really kind of need to be in hard water. You can fudge it a little bit, but my additional sodium ions are no true substitute for water hardness. So fish that need really hard water and specifics, you know, specific dissolved solids, specific electrolytes in the water, specific dissolved mineral salts, I don't have any of them. All I have is sodium. So, as I said, I can sort of fudge it a little bit and fish that might need 10 or 12 degrees water hardness will do fine in my water. But fish that need really hard water or, as I said, fish that need very specifically uh, balanced water chemistry do not do well in my water at all. In fact, when I first started keeping fish, I didn't realize that Cynodontis catfish were African catfish that came from hard water systems. Most of them did. I do have two Cynodontis catfish that do just fine in medium hard to moderately soft water. So the Cynodontis petricola, or possibly Lucipinus, can't live in soft water, but it can live in softer water than your average African hard water fish. So this can tolerate water hardness down to maybe seven or eight degrees of hardness. It can tolerate a neutral pH. And so this fish, even though I have zero degrees hardness, the sodium in this tank sort of adds enough of a buffer and it helps this fish cope with the lack of magnesium and calcium. So it does well in my water. I have a Cynodontus yupteris uh, or African featherfin squeaker in my 125. We can walk over and have a look at that one here for a moment. This is another African catfish that can tolerate neutral water and can tolerate a lower degree of hardness. So once again, even though I have zero degrees of hardness, the additional sodium in my water sort of helps me cheat a little bit. So it does give me a large degree of flexibility with what I can do with my water, but there are some fish that just can't deal with the additional sodium regardless. I have trouble keeping certain fish, and apparently those ballast sharks are one of them, and I'm not sure why. Like I said, the ballast sharks are not particularly sensitive fish, but they just won't seem to survive in my water. So I'm not going to be buying any more ballast sharks. Uh, rubber lip plecos are another one that I've got maybe a 50-50 shot when I bring them home and I put them in quarantine. Um, it's not unusual for them to die within the first couple of days I've got them. And so what I've been doing, I've been experimenting for the last month or so with a new quarantine tank in my shower down here I just it's a utility shower that I use for fish stuff and I set up a quarantine tank in there and instead of operating it like my regular little quarantine tank down here which is run just like all my other tanks and right now doesn't have anybody in actual quarantine these are just some female guppies I have and they just kinda live permanently in this tank but this tank is managed like all my other tanks and has just regular old water in it my new quarantine tank that I've set up, I've been cutting the water with my RO water. So I've been reducing the amount of sodium in the water. Now that makes that a very, very soft quarantine tank because I'm even reducing the sodium 
by putting the RO water in it. And in fact, I have not yet checked the um, pH in that tank. I don't even know what I've lowered the pH to, and I haven't even done a dissolved solids test on it yet. I'm also trying to get a piece of driftwood to, to sink in that tank. It's currently floating, and it's loading the tank up with tannins. It looks like a tea stain tank. So between the high level of tannins in the tank that are actually good for the fish, I've also got less sodium ions in that quarantine tank, and I'm having better luck with it. Uh, neon tetras are another one that for some reason I've got about a 50-50 survival rate when I bring them home. And so far, the neons that I've brought home and put in that tank with the RO water in it has provided me with about, I'm going to guesstimate, around an 80% survival rate. And I've also put two uh, rubber lips in there, both of which survived, and I now have a bristle nose in there. I don't really like the bristle nose, but I wanted another rubber lip and they didn't have any, so I just went ahead and got a bristle nose. Uh, I'm going to be putting that in another one of my tanks here in the fairly near future. So that's a little ongoing experiment I've got uh, to find out whether or not just reducing the sodium in my water to allow fish to sort of adapt to my higher levels of sodium might not be all I need to do to get them used to my water. And then once they're used to it, they'll do fine because it's not a ridiculous amount of sodium, but it is an unusual amount of sodium. And in conjunction with the lack of any other um, ions in the water, the lack of any other uh, mineral salts or electrolytes, you can call them whatever you want, they're pretty much all three are the same thing, uh, electrolytes are mineral salts, and the fish need them, they need them for osmoregulation, they need them for their nervous system, for proper nerve conduction and muscle control, so there's reasons fish are supposed to be in certain kinds of water, and as I say all along, I've got very odd water, and I can sort of fudge it with some fish, but others just can't survive in my water. So if you, you know, watch my videos and you hear me talk about my water or say that I've got odd water and certain fish can't live in it, uh, so on and so forth, that is exactly what I'm talking about and why I say that. So on that note, I will ask you to subscribe. I've got several things I want to get done today. I'm trying to get caught up down here in the fish room. I'm a little behind schedule. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of the stuff I'm going to be cranking out today. Uh, thanks again for watching. This tank here is my 125-gallon tank, if you're interested. The tank we were first looking at over there at the beginning of the video was my Garami tank. So thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.